Welcome to Working Horses with Jim. I'm Brenda, and Jim is over here getting Buck ready to go. Ken and Buck, we're going to head down the road and get a bale of the haylage that we have down there. We're going to be bringing it over to a temporary fenced in pasture that we didn't want to hay again just because there's some good feed in there. So we're going to be taking along Buck and Ken today, or they're going to be taking us along, and we're heading down there. So come along with us. Good morning, everybody. over the top home and I'm just curious to see how well they work. This is a tricky time of year for getting the horses clean. I brushed them and then every time I look it looks like they're dusty. They were out in the rain last night for a little while until we got them in. It's really windy right here. And I clipped all their manes this morning. Looking good, boys. Ready to roll, aren't Go you, back. Buck? So we are down in our lower farm. It's our 12 acre piece and the bales that you see here are bales that our neighbor Owen um, baled and wrapped from this piece. We did it um, on halves or shares for the second cut. So this is this year's crop and we still have just a few bales left from last year. Jim has, is coming down with Ken and Buck to pick one of them up. We're just going to drag it up the road a piece to uh, a piece of hay field that we fenced in this morning, Jim and I, with temporary fencing just to give the horses, uh, excuse me, the cows a little bit more uh, grazing area. And the reason we're getting one of these bales is just to entice them into that field because they have to go through an area that used to be fenced in to get to the new area where they can graze. They love these bales even though it's last year's and they're really kind of smelly and, and getting old. They still love them and they go crazy over them and so this will entice them into the field. I thought these were the ones left over. Huh? I thought these were the only ones left over. Oh, those two? Okay, so we got like 10 from last year. I thought these were the right chains, but like, not from last time, I don't know. You don't have much extra. Can you come hold this? Yep. Just hold it and stand over there. Over here? Let's see how he's going to make do here, because there isn't much extra chain. Oh, bye. Bye. Oh, bye. 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 Oh. Not much to work with here. 
Ew. Okay. Just for the bat. Hey. Is that all you're gonna do there? Oh. Cast out. Okay, let me explain a couple things. When you put the chain around a bale like this to tow it, it's best not to stop at all, like I just did. Damn it. Because what happens is the chain will go slack. Pointing at the chain, brother. The chain will go slack and then it'll drop down on that bale and then you'll lose it. So um, that's the problem with hauling a bale this way. You gotta, when you start, it's best not to start, best not to stop at all, like I just did. So, but anyways, it, it stayed in place. Um, apparently last time I came down with a different chain. Most of my chains are 12 foot long and 12 foot chain will not go around this bale and be able to hitch. This particular chain I have on here has a, it was broken and so I had patched it together and I, I believe it's a little bit longer than 12 feet. So I had that piece, that chain and another short chain so I thought that'd be enough. And it is, but just barely. Um, another thing you don't want to do when you're towing a chain like this the way we've got it set up is you don't want it too short because sometimes when they tow, the bale will roll and then you can't get it unhitched when you get to back to where you want to be. So it's actually better to have it a little bit longer like this, or even longer than this would be better, and just don't stop. Just keep right on rolling. Okay, I don't have much extra there. So now we won't have to stop until we get to the gate. And even then, if Brenda can probably jump off and run yeah, ahead. I and... probably jump off. So, I don't know if you can see down there, down the, the road, we just put up this temporary fence. Their driveway but it doesn't look like it is no it's just kind of especially not now it's not doing really anything okay can you jump off of me still moving that can turn you up good job hey right there Oh, it's right here. Hoping she would get that in time, and she did, so that I don't have to stop. You could just drop the fence there and just follow me down. It's really horses. stony, really stony through here. Yeah, it is really stony. Uh, the horses were actually the Percherons and the the Suffolks were over here last night in this side of the pasture they have to go through a long all the way around about the back of our big field to get over here and they hardly ever come over but they did last night and Jim uh oh Jim did not want them over here he knew he was gonna do this today with this bale and he did not want the horses over here able to eat this baleage uh, I guess it's not good for horses. So, last night after supper, it was rainy and dark, but we saw them and we came out and and uh, led them back over to the farm. Across the, across the way and Jim got the Pertrons and I had the, the colts and I was so pleased with how well the colts led over. I just led Earl and Duke came right along and they were absolutely no problem at all. I was so proud of them. Oh. Oh. Well. Bye. That's okay. Bye. Bye.
came off a Master. little early, I guess. We'll take the plastic off here and the string. Yeah. And then we may pull it a little farther or we may not. But yeah. Well, I don't know oh. if, you, if it is apparent, but we made a loop. We went up the, that road right there, up the hill. Jim came around down the hill and brought the bale here, right at the edge of this fence. And then it came undone. Where exactly did you truly want it? Just a few more feet. Just a few more feet, yeah. And to get the plastic off and the twine off, um, I'm actually gonna probably throw the chain on again and see if I can't roll it off because we gotta get this stuff off and sometimes it's hard to do without rolling it off of it. I'm not yeah. sure if you know what I mean, but I hope to show you. Yeah, but I'll get that out from underneath and you can see the twine that's gotta come off of smells that. Smells pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah, actually this smells a lot better than some of the other ones. This, this was good and wrapped, I think. And This and was made a year ago now. It's nicely pickled um, clover and hay. It was really, really good quality stuff at the time. So I told everybody it's not really good for um, horses. And is no. that because sometimes you can get mold Plus, in it? That is mold right there. See that white mold? Bad, bad, bad. Doesn't bother me at all for the cows. They can handle it. But I do not want the horses out here. That's why I think I heard Brenda talking about the horses last night. They were in this pasture and they don't come to this pasture generally. And uh, there's a few, a little bit of remains of a bale up back where uh, the, the, their cows are fed some. They've been using these bales on their cows. And uh, so we just didn't really want them to be, take the chance of them eating something like this mold. So we ended up coming out in the rain and getting them last night. I was telling them how proud I was of Duke and Earl, how well they led. Okay, I think I got the string. So I'm gonna tow this over here. It wouldn't bother me if the bale stayed right here, but just to get that plastic off, it's just gonna be easy if I roll it one time. Yeah, makes sense. Now that right there is super wet on top. Is that just from, it's not cause rain got in there, is it? No, th this hay was put up rather wet last summer and you can see it's still rather wet. Really wet. And, but it's still, Great feed. Now. The cows go crazy over it. They because, love it. Because we have an awful lot of this wrapped around bales, um, we don't mind so much. But if I was short on feed, I probably wouldn't do it this way. I would just coax the cows over here and get them into this field because with that quality stuff there, they may not dive right into this stuff. Although it's surprising, they, they like this stuff. So they may eat, I'm hoping they'll eat both before anything spoils more than it has. It just all depends on the weather at this point. Okay. You get snow any time now. I'm gonna try to flip this over if I can. Maybe we can just do it by hand. Oh. Give me hand here. Maybe we can just do that. Oh, we're gonna have to go that way. Okay. Ready? Oh yeah, this isn't bad. One more. Okay, good. One more. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna freak them out. Oh, there's a little more mold on the bottom. We take all that junk home with us. Yep. Leave as much of this here as we can. Leave it right on the bag. I know, I'm just trying to get the haylage out of here. <laughs> if you notice, I parked my horses so they're not heading back where they came from for safety purposes. It's always better not to head them back to the barn. 
Okay. Just for laughs. They got a better sense of direction than I do. Where'd my other chain go? Uh oh. Hold that. A little bit. Step up. Three, 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 three. Five. 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 Oh. Oh. <laughs> Here's the opening into the field. So Jim thinks if they come over here and start chowing down, they will just eventually get in there. Give it a bit. Oh, I'll get it. Thank you. Well, a lot of people will probably be saying why you take the time to do it that way. And uh, I could have, I could have done it different ways. I could have taken my ski ski and go down the road and get that. I could have used the tractor, although I don't have a bucket in my tractor, so I would have had to drag with a tractor too. Um, but. I, I don't think a lot of people realize and the importance of keeping horses in shape when I'm ready to use them on a job that is definitely for them. All this little odds and ends that we do um, just keeps them in shape. In the process, it tends to make us work longer days, but how many people work their eight hour days at their regular job and then do some other um, Oh, do some other, uh, have some other hobby. Well, for myself, I am fortunate enough to have my work and my hobby are the same thing. So it's not an issue for me. I don't have a problem with working the longer hours to be doing something like this so that it keeps me in shape for doing the other stuff that I do. I know it's kind of a long run out answer to a question, but uh, anyways, that's where it goes. So Brenda's getting the gate hitched up, and then we're gonna head for home. And uh, that's probably all we'll have for you today. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for coming along. Have a good day. Oh! What? What, what, what? Oh! You can put that on video. <laughs> This is why I should have had those other pants on because my phone was found on the driveway. Bad girl. Yikes. Thankfully, thankfully Jim saw it. He gave me one of those looks and I was like, what, what? That was it. Phew. There's been several times now we're going doing something like this and her phone's three quarters of the way out of her pocket. All ready to fall down the ground. Thank you. And trees, always... trees. She's so pretty.